Time for conditioning. always in such incredible shape that most of the time when we're getting ready for a fight or when the event's happening, it's not really like a time to increase volume and workload like uh, like most camps have to do. We're most, we're most of just kind of fine tuning and uh, tapering off. Our lifestyle is 100% trained all the time. Like we are constantly doing this. He can go all the time. He's always right there, ready to just be uh, tapered and peaked. So this week is more of a regeneration, trying to just kind of, we've been traveling on the holidays, a lot of stuff's been going on, a lot of hard training. Um, it's just kind of a time to, to get the body back in, in rhythm and sync and get ready for the next phase of training, which I guess you could say is just is back in the fight camp mode. You know, stay, uh, stay as strong as we can, but as healthy as we can. So basically we're just gonna get a couple of rounds today of like some bell squat walks on the uh, bell squat machine, um, right to a kettlebell swing, just a hip hinge pattern, nice and ballistic, and then jumping on the uh, Airdyne bike for a, a three mile ride. We'll get a few rounds of that, just building intensity up slowly over those three rounds, but treating this more kind of like a recovery regeneration day, aerobically, kind of more, to say, more so. Ultimately, it's his technique and his mindset that has gotten him where it's where he is. You know, I mean, there's black belts that are skilled all over the world, but there's the elite, world-class guys, and that's it's mindset and technique and all that. And so, more so than ever, like there's no added strength we're gonna get now that's gonna make you know him better. It's only just refining all the strength that we have, refining. And, and increasing the movement, getting more strength out of that new movement and staying as healthy as possible and always basically just becoming healthier as we age through the lifestyle has, has kind of been our goal and our mission. Never questions anything, does everything. Uh, we'll go as hard as he needs to go any day. We'll go as low as he needs to go any day. But it has really adopted that this is more about a lifestyle. Um, it's about being healthy, about being uh, happy and feeling confident. And I believe uh, if you kind of look at his career, you started to see his evolution as uh, just incorporating health and wellness into his life. And that's really transformed into a competitor uh, and the teacher he is. So I think that's it's really done wonders for me, um, both you know, with my teaching and stuff, but also being able to be a part of it. I like to start my day in the gym, just getting my body warm and loose. And, uh, you know, we have we have our hard days, but most of what we do is a lot simpler and like 
softer than what people probably expect. He, he's not killing me and breaking me down and like trying to make me just fall over and barely be able to walk out of the gym. Just the right amount and to make me feel better to, to train the rest of the day, you know, because obviously training is, is priority. You know, we're just getting started, so I can't, I can't kill myself <laughs> this morning and then not have anything left. My wrestling coach that we're about to go work with, he's just an insane human being when it comes to the combat arts just savage athleticism. He didn't even start wrestling until he was in high school. He got a you know full ride. Um, I mean, he, he played football. He was a swimmer as well. Just like, you know, when you see his body, you're not gonna think a swimmer. Simplest terms, it's a nightmare. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's constantly getting better, constantly evolving, and um, it just he's he, he gets harder and harder to to win any position, to get any takedown. It's just um, which is great, you know. Uh, you know that's exactly what what he needs, and but it's uh, it, it's just hard on. Hard on training partners. Kind of going over some some basic stuff we've been working on the last I don't know really six months or so just touching up on some stuff and um, just perfecting some little areas transitions and stuff like that and and it's a hammer dude I get better every time working with these guys uh, they're you know they're physical like monsters but they're super technical super technical. Um, you know, their, their technical first and then their physical attributes just complement their technique. 
Um, and they've just been cleaning up so many details, so many small points. Um, you know, overall, I'm always getting better, but you know, there's always a little thing here or there to to sharpen up or, or add. Got to have the wrestling sharp, confident, uh, because I want to, you know, I want to win as cleanly and efficiently as possible. So I need that takedown. Um, but uh, the, the fun thing is, is how it all works together, you know, because in like regular grappling wrestling, you know, I, I'm no I'm no chump or whatever. Like I, I'm, I'm hard to take down and I, I can usually take down most people. Um, but, uh, you know, when it comes to MMA wrestling, I feel like I excel because it's not hand fighting and having to take shots and, you know, now everything's set up off the combinations and people are naturally going to stand a little taller. Um, and because of my length, I usually have the reach advantage. And also because I'm not as worried about them taking me down in MMA, uh, most people want to try to avoid the ground. It gives me the chance to fire my combinations off and I, I feel like I can set up my shots better. Um, you know, and of course I love, I love the wall work. I love the cage. Uh, it's basically like the ground, you know, and so it's comfortable for me to pin someone there and play that style. So, uh, you know, uh, I've been talking about it with my coaches, like since that last fight, that was just a huge uh, moment for my experience, my evolution. Um, and now I feel like I'm tapping into my, my full MMA potential and reaching my, my black belt MMA level right now. And uh, it's super exciting. And I, I, I believe that, you know, this might be what I'm best at is, is MMA, uh, better than jujitsu, uh, better than gi, no gi, or of course, obviously Muay Thai or wrestling. Um, whenever I can put it all together into my complete system, I feel like I'm really, you know, sort of doing what I'm meant to do. You know, um, my jujitsu is perfectly transitioned to MMA. Uh, you know, my striking coach has done an incredible, incredible job with me, Evolu Santai, Mauricio Veo. Um, you know, and so uh, I, I'm not going to just out wrestle, you know, a national champion wrestler. I'm not going to outstrike a, uh, you know, uh, a Musashi level striker, you know. And on the ground, you know, there are some high level guys that can give me, you know, maybe a hard time or even things up. But when I can put it all together, I feel like I match up well with everybody. And, um, and so uh, right now, I. I, I, I am now starting to believe that MMA quite possibly may be my my ultimate expression of, of who I am as a martial artist and, and is what I'm best at. schools, if not maybe, you know, the only school uh, in the world where you're going to find, you know, a world champion black belt gold medal and a world title in the main. Uh, you know, the medal and the belt will be up there in the front. And so, you know, I just want everyone to, to like, when they walk in, they feel, you know, they're like, wow, okay, there's a history here. There's, there's a special story here.
the professional jiu-jitsu scene is so big now, um, which is really amazing. Just, you know, it makes me so happy to see how guys can make a living these days just competing in jiu-jitsu, you know, um, not having to teach uh, as far as like owning their own school, you know. Um, they could just do seminars and compete in pro events. I mean, there's like a big pro event basically, you know, a couple times a month uh, between all the fights and wins. And then you got, you know, Polaris, Kasai, and now the Third Coast. They just had their first year and all these other smaller shows in Europe and around the U.S. So, um, you know, it's super, super cool to see like how guys can stay active on the professional scene. Um, all the big matchups and uh, and people being able to to make a living um, and, and do well, you know, um, you know, I think uh, like as far as like gi jiu jitsu and you know the world's um, lately the last couple of years has just been really really beautiful. Um, there was definitely a point at which I was kind of like, you know, basically kind of when I phased out of jiu jitsu. Uh, as far as like in the gi doing, you know, the pans and the worlds and all the, the circuit. Um, there was definitely a feeling of like, ah, I don't really like how the game's being played these days. Um, and it just, it just wasn't as fun. Uh, and that's a big reason why I started, you know, committing myself to MMA. But, uh, but now I'm, I'm just like, you know, I think it's, it's circled back around. You see, uh, you see takedowns happening a lot more now. Um, you know, just beautiful, beautiful guards, beautiful, um, you know, just beautiful jiu-jitsu. And guys that are, are hungry and going for the finish. I'm just, I'm a fan of a lot of the guys um, that are competing these days. You know, it's interesting. Um, I, I definitely have, you know, grown to... Uh, be interested and really like more open to understanding uh, the leg lock game and that style. Uh, but I'm, I'm I'm definitely an old school guy. I mean, everyone knows about knows that about me. Um, I love the pressure. I love to be on top. I love to pass guards. I love to mount, and I like to attack the upper body. You know, uh, of course, a submission is a submission. You make the person tap. You know, you checkmate him, and uh, and you won. But there's a certain satisfaction um, about taking someone's neck or arm versus their leg. That it, it, it just wouldn't be the same for me, and it never will be. Um, and it's not that I don't think it's valid, but uh, you know, it just wouldn't give me the same happiness <laughs> as as it does whenever I can pass and mount and choke someone from mount, or take their arm from mount, or take their back, or something like that. Um, and and I definitely think. You know, being able to pass guard and have a mount, have pressure, have this takedowns, uh, help you transfer your skills into multiple arts uh, more seamlessly or multiple formats more seamlessly. You know, ADCC, you have to have takedowns. You know what I mean? In MMA, you have to have takedowns. You have to have pressure. Um, you know, so I think that's what's helped me be successful across the, the three combat arts that I compete in, you know, gi, no gi, MMA, it's because my game is basically the same for each one, you know, more or less. I definitely believe that, uh, you know, one of these years, I don't know if it'll be 2020 or 2021 or what, but, um, you know, when, when I start to phase out of MMA and hang up the gloves, um, I want to do one more Worlds, um, you know, just to, just to say goodbye. I didn't get to really say goodbye 
you know, I think I could put together a, a great camp and, and uh, give some of these young guys a tough time and, you know, just do one more to say goodbye. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not done in jiu-jitsu. I'll be competing in the gi until I'm 60 years old at least. <laughs> That's the goal. Uh, you know, uh, I'll do one more, maybe do some, some super fights here and there, and then, uh, you know, just fight masters until until it's all over. So I want, you know, I can never not compete. And, uh, you know, I want to have a family and I definitely want my kids to grow up watching their father in action and, uh, you know, knowing that that's what we do. That's what we're about. <laughs>